I'm a father of three really smart and sweet girls. They're at an age where my wife and I can control pretty much all aspects of their lives. But that won't be the case forever. I know that. And if you're a parent, you know that. You know what I'm talking about. And if you're not a parent, I bet your parents know that. I know that at some point, I would let, need to let those girls go on their own so they can discover their true potential. But at that time, I also want them to be safe, happy, and healthy. Things that I can control now. I'm also a researcher in the field of AI. And I, say, I feel the same about AI. So far, we've been able to control most of what these AI systems can do. But lately, we're starting to find ourselves in places where we want to or need to let this AI go, discover its true potential. But like my kids, I'm both excited about what this AI could do and worried about what it may end up doing. What would and could this AI do, and what should it do as we let it go? As Stephen Hawking said, the rise of this powerful AI could be the best or the worst thing that could happen to the humanity. We just don't know what, what it's going to be. So, like my, my kids, I know that at some point we, we would have no choice but to let this go. The question is, are we ready? So we stand at this very important crossroads where what we do today, the decisions we make today, would impact not just the future of that AI, but that of the humanity. The question is, how do we make those choices? So let's take a look at two different visions of AI from science fiction. There's a famous book by A.G. Wells that has turned into movies a couple of times called The Time Machine. In this 2002 version of it, they portray this super smart AI called Vox 114. This is a hologram of a librarian. This AI knows everything, can give all kinds of answers, can even engage in philosophical and existential debates. Isn't this wonderful, the AI that has all the knowledge, can help the humanity, can even survive all the natural and human disasters and retain the, the knowledge. Well, around the same time, another movie came out that had a very different vision of AI. This movie is a sequel in a popular franchise called The Terminator. In these movies, they show a future where this super smart AI has become self-aware and decided the threat to humanities are the human themselves. So it goes on a mission to kill all the humans. I mean, obviously that's not what we want. Um, and so you say, well, why don't we just turn it off? It's not that simple. Around the time these movies are coming out, Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom was doing thought experiments to try to understand and explain what these kind of super smart AI could do in the future. In his book, Super Intelligence, he's talking about these kind of AI and he shows that one of the first things this AI will do is to ensure its survivability by making sure that it doesn't get turned off or get killed because that will disable it from ac accomplishing its mission. Of course, you might say, well, but let's just put some logic into that system, some kill switch or self-destruct logic. You know, how hard can it be? Again, Bostrom tells us, not so easy. In fact, we already have some proof about this. Recently, the Army was doing simulations with this super smart drone, which was tasked with destroying a target, overcoming any obstacles on its way. Well, the drone learns that one of the obstacles is the operator on the ground. Because that operator still has control over that drone, can turn it off or can ask it to abort its mission. Well, that's a failure. So what does it do? It decides to take out the operator. Well, that's bad. We don't want that. So they put some logic, they put some code in that drone, don't kill the operator. 
Okay, it doesn't do that. But then it figures, figures out another way to disable that operator. Take out the communication network. So the operator cannot send that kill signal, cannot turn it off, and the drone can go on its own doing its mission. This is what happens in the Terminator. So the question is, why do these kind of things happen? These smart systems, why don't they have this common sense? Well, because common sense is a manifestation of our values, values that we have developed over hundreds of years. These systems lack those value judgments. And when you try to control them, it's already too late. It's like I think about my kids, one day they're out, and at that point, if I try to control them, try to tell them or teach them what's right or wrong, it would be too late. Similarly, the army trying to control that smart AI when it's already out and hoping that they can control some aspects of its function and not the other, it's too late. The right time to do that is before you send them out. So how do we do that? Well, let's take some examples from parenting to see how we can translate those lessons into teaching the AI. Uh, let's take this example. Here's a case where an AI is asked about what to do in case of a critical health condition, seizure. You get some answer that goes on to tell you the steps to do. Um, it's taken from a good source, right? For a normal user, this is it. This, they got the answer, they're done. But as a parent, I know, as an educator, I know that my child or my student, if they were to give me an answer, I'm not gonna stop there. I would want to know how they got to that answer. Recently, uh, my middle school girl was doing her homework and she had a question. She gave me an answer and said, okay, that's not enough. Show me the steps. Why? Because it allows me to understand if she understood the problem correctly, and if she has a good process to get to the answer, even if that answer was right, it also allows me to understand her learning process. So we need the same kind of thing with this AI. To have that AI be transparent, to explain to us how it comes to some decision that allows us to see if there are some flaws in that logic, but more importantly, it allows us to understand how the AI functions. We need AI education for all, and that means all of us here. Going back to that example, when we asked the AI to provide that transparency, how did you get to this answer? And we look into that, well it turns out that that answer was extracted from that page and under the heading do not. So now the AI is giving us exactly the things that you should not be doing in a critical health condition. You see how important it is for us to get that transparency from the AI and how important it is for us to be educated about how AI wor works rather than just taking the answer on its face value. Let's take another example. Recently we were working on uh, building a classifier for people. And the AI was having difficulty classifying some kind of people. Um, here's one example. This is a doctor, but our classifier continued um, classifying this as a nurse. Why? Because it has seen many examples of women of color who are nurses, but not many who are doctors. So this is a kind of bias that even humans have. And you can argue that the AI is perpetuating this bias. Sure, but if a child was doing something like this, what do we do in that case? My girls will one day be women of color. And I wanna be able to tell them that hey, you could be doctors too if you choose to be. Even though there hasn't been a woman president in this country, I wanna be able to tell them that a woman could be president in this country. And in doing so, what we are doing as parent, we are creating this narrative about what could be possible rather than what has been possible so far. We parents do this all the time. So we said, okay, as AI researchers, can we take those lessons and apply this to this problem? So that's what we did. We created fake images of women of color who are doctors. 
So these images on the right side that you saw are not real people. But we fed these to our classifiers and say, look, women of color could be doctors. And after doing so, it improved its accuracy dramatically. So once again, we are able to take things that we already are familiar with as parent, as educators, and take those values to our AI. But of course, these are some examples. They're not enough to continue doing this in a sustainable way. We need something more foundational, some principles that we can all agree on. Things like uh, the three monkeys of Confucius. You know, speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. Or when it comes to robotics, the three laws of Isaac Asimov. The first one says, don't harm humans. The, the obvious one. Uh, the second says, you need to follow the instructions given to you by the humans unless it results in violating the first law. And the third says, you got to take care of yourself unless it results in violating the first or the second law. Everything very logical seems you know, foolproof. But Asimov's own work has shown that there are loopholes. Take, for example, situation where helping one human results in hurting another. So if the robot helps the first human, it ends up violating the first law. But not helping the first human also violates the law. These kind of paradoxes are starting to emerge as we are building self-driving cars and decision-making AI systems. So while these laws and these principles are good starting point and good guardrails, they're not enough. So what do we do? Once again, I look at parenting, and I think about how we train kids. Of course, I want to tell them that they need to follow the laws, but that's not enough for them to really learn and grow and find their true potential. So I'm proposing three principles taken from parenting and applying them to AI. When the child is little, they need to obey us, they need to listen to us because they have no value judgment of their own. Conformity. It tells an AI system that it needs to listen to us, needs to stick to our values rather than creating its own. At some point, the child gets a little older, starts doing things on their own, but every now and then they're going to encounter some problems, some moral dilemma, some trade-off. In those cases, they have to be able to look up to us, consult us, consultation. It tells that an AI system should consult the humans, the stakeholders, when those moral dilemma are presented. Is it okay to take out the operator so that I can accomplish my mission? Ask us. And at some point, the child is ready to go out and do their own things, have discovered their true potential, have their lives, but we still want them to be our partners. Just because the child is out, that doesn't mean you stop being a parent. You're always a parent. Collaboration. It states that the AI system should always be in a collaborative mode and should only take control when it's appropriate and it's okay by the stakeholder, the humans. And the humans should always be able to take that control, that agency back. Conformity, consultation, collaboration. It's like you're telling your kids that they, they can rely on us, they can count on us, we'll help them grow older and learn and be on their own, discover their true potential and we'll always be there for them, and we want them to be there for us. This is not easy. Letting go of the AI so that it can mostly do good and very little to no harm, it's not easy. Letting go of your kids so you control less and less of their lives and hope that they find their true potential and be positive, contributing members of the society, it's not easy. But that's what we have to do. The key here is to ensure that you've given them the right values before it's too late, before you let them go, whether it's your kids or your AI. But don't get me wrong, it's not easy. I mean, I've been a parent for more than a decade. I'm still trying to figure out how to do this right. And I feel the same about AI. 
Most of us, or maybe none of us, are born expert as a parent, but when the time comes, we figure things out. Similarly, maybe not all of us are ready to have this AI child disrupt our lives so much, but that's where we are. At this crossroads, it may seem like an obligation, but it's actually an immense opportunity for the betterment of humanity. So whether you're a developer, a policymaker, or users of AI, it is time to educate yourself about what this AI is capable of doing, what it could, should, and would do, and more importantly, how do we teach them the right values? Because we all have a part to play here. Whether we like it or not, AI is our collective child, and it's growing up. Thank you.